Welcome to part three, which is the final part of this tutorial. So the first thing we're going to be doing is we're going to be creating some areas to add our eyes and we're going to be adding some shaping around the snout or the, the muzzle of our meerkat. So I'm just taking my fine twisted needles here and I'm just going to create an indentation for where his mouth needs to be. Hang on. So welcome to the third and final part of our meerkat tutorial. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to add back in that mouth shape that we had earlier on when we added that piece under his chin. So I'm just going to use my fine needles side by side now and you'll be able to feel where that gap is, where his mouth will naturally need to go. And just felt that down using your fine needles so you know roughly where you need to add the wall for your mouth later on when we come to add it into position. You want to get it nice and deep so that you've got a nice um, deeply set mouth as well so it looks nice and natural and doesn't look linear or 2D when you come to add it. So take your time with this and the fine needles will give you a nice smooth finish as well whereas those medium needles they'll be a bit too clumpy, a bit too big so you'll end up with um, more of a jaggedy appearance to the, to the mouth shape that you're creating with the needles. Don't go for anything too wide at the moment. I'm just going to give his face a bit of a felt round the sides as well and just create a bit more shaping there and under his chin. So making more of that chin area that we've, we've added in. I'm just going underneath as well. And you can see it's taking shape there. It's almost like a half moon shape. Just flip him upside down. And get it nice and, and deeply felt at this part um, because we're not going to be doing too much more with this so we don't need to have too much squidge there. And just make sure you're going round the, the neck area as well and really tapering that kind of mouth shape, that half moon shape into the rest of the head. Okay, so I'm going to give his muzzle a bit of a, a felt now as well so around those areas that we added earlier and I'm just using my fingers just to push it into position and then felting around it to give it a bit more shaping so I'm just pressing that round and just go with the go with the shape that you've added you'll be able to feel exactly where you need to felt to create that shape a bit more so we're bringing back in that triangular shape that we added with that additional piece so the next thing I'm going to do is use my fingers to create indentations for where I want my eyes to be which is about halfway down the face you don't want it to be too high uh, because it'll look a bit odd and you'll make the meerkat look older the higher position the eye the higher up the older um, and more adult something will look so try and get them lower so I'd say about halfway is about right here and I'm just going to felt them down and get a nice deep indentation there so that the eyes are nice and deeply set when we come to add them later on. So really using my needles to get in there and get a nice deep kind of, what's the word I'm looking for, indentation. So you want to have it so that it's probably about half a centimetre in depth, this part. So I'm really pushing down. You can't really tell on the video, but there's quite a lot of resistance there. So I'm really having to push down to get that nice and deeply inset into position. And again, using your fine needles, excuse me, I can't talk. Using your fine needles will be lots easier because if you're using your medium needles here, you've got bigger needles, so it's going to be harder to penetrate that wall. Whereas by using your fine twisted needles, you're able to penetrate that wall a lot more easily and really get them in there to get that nice, deeply inset eye socket. So just keep going until you think you're about there. So I think roughly about at this stage is where you want to get to. So like I said, about half a centimetre in depth. So the next thing I want to do is I'm going to grab some of my white Shetland wool and we're going to add some to his tummy. And we're going to make this look quite fluffy now. So we want to go sort of add the wool where his torso is. We don't want to add it onto the thighs or anything like that. We just want to keep it exclusively to his torso and his chest area at the moment and maybe a little bit on his shoulders and under his chin too. 
And I'm not felting this down really firmly. I'm not felting it like I felted the brown wool bats in earlier. I'm felting it so that it's still got um, that fluffiness to it. So you don't wanna go in too heavy handed with this. I'm going quite sporadically with my needles around the, around the wool so that it's felted down, but it's not really firmly felted down. So you still have that texture there, that fluffy belly texture that we want to try and achieve with the meerkat. So that's the first layer added. I'm just gonna go between his legs here and get rid of that naughty bit of loose fiber there. I felt that away. And I'm actually gonna go in and I'm gonna add another layer. And I'm just gonna again, build it up and get this looking a bit more fluffy again. So once again, not too, not too firmly felted. Just enough so that it's, it's on. It's a bit of a fine balance really, and you'll know it once you get there, but just go quite tentatively, take your time. Don't feel like you need to get it all on really quickly because then you'll kind of get to the stage where you feel it's been felted too much. I'm just gonna trim away that excess there rather than felting it down so I don't get a harsh line. And same on the other side. And then I'm just gonna felt that down loosely into the rest of the body. Again, going between the legs and up around those thigh areas. And again, this really, really makes a feature of those thighs that we added earlier on. So he's really starting to look a lot more meerkatty now. Earlier on, like I was saying, he looked a bit like um, a fawn or he reminded me a bit of Krampus as well, like the kind of like that the evil character of Christmas. Um, I don't know if any of you have ever heard of Krampus, but I thought he was starting to look a bit like him, but now he's looking a bit more cute, a bit more meerkat looking, which is a good thing. So I'm just adding a bit more to the chest area, getting that felted down. And we wanna take it so that it's also going sort of to, to the lower half of his face. So I'm just gonna place this first piece so that it's on the chest and under his chin as well. So we haven't got any strange divides or anything like that. It all looks like it's integrating nice and smoothly. Using my fine needles, making sure I'm keeping that mouth shape there. So felting that back in and just lightly going round and felting everything into position. And then I wanna add some more once I've got this part added, I wanna add some more to his cheek area as well. So I'm just gonna go in and position that into place and bring it upwards so that it's covering some of his cheek but not all of his cheek. And again, just doing very light, shallow stabs with my needles. I'm not, I'm not stabbing really heavily, I'm going in very, in very shallow motions. So don't feel like you need to really stab deeply into this. Go in very shallowly and then you'll get that nice, slightly fluffy effect that we're looking for. And then once you've added all of the, the white Shetland, we're going to add the brown. So the first layer of brown to his eyes. So I'm gonna take my fine twisted needles and I'm gonna felt this into the indentation and also around the outside because this is gonna make like the brown um, that we um, see on a meerkat's eye, that's um, the circular brown piece before you actually see his eye. I don't know what the technical name for it is. I should probably look it up on Wikipedia or something like that. Um, go and ask uh, someone, at, someone at the local zoo. I'm sure they'd tell me. So our nearest zoo is Paynton Zoo. It's a bit of an epic. It's not the closest, but um, it is a very good zoo though. And they do have meerkats. So maybe I needed to do some research before I did this. So just getting this all nicely felted in and we want to create a, a roundish shape, but we want it to be slightly higher in the inner upper corner and then go downwards on the outer bottom corner, outside corner, if that makes sense. We're gonna add additional pieces of brown to this as we go along, so don't feel like once you've done th this, that's it. We're going to continue to add to this as the tutorial progresses. So I'm gonna go back in again and just find my mouse again and get that felted back in. And it's important to keep going in because as you add the layers, if you didn't felt his mouth back in, it just makes life a bit more difficult for you later on when you come to add the brown in for his mouth. So it's just good to keep felting that bit down. So next I'm gonna get two bits of my black wool bats and I'm gonna create, I'm gonna roll in my fingers the wool bats to create two wool balls that are of equal proportions. I'm gonna take one of the balls and I'm gonna place it into the eye socket that we've already created. So on top of that 
brown that we added a minute ago. I'm just getting them nice and round and making sure they're roughly the same size. I'm then going to take my medium twisted cross star needle, just reposition that a second because it moved, and then felt that down into the eye socket. And just felt it down so you get a round shape that tapers upwards ever so slightly. Okay, so once it's finished, you'll see the kind of shape you're aiming for. You can go for a completely round circular shape if you want to as well. You don't have to go with the eye shape that I'm making here, but I just quite like the eye kind of going upwards ever so slightly on the inner corner. I just think it adds to his lovely cute look. So I'm just going to give that a good old felt down, really compact it down as deeply as you can this. And that's why it's really good to use that medium needle because it gives you that ability to do that. So that's looking good. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to add my second piece of wool now for his other eye. And it's just a case of now making sure that it's replicating the same shape as the eye we've already added. So just keep checking it, keep looking back, looking at it face on to make sure that it's looking the same size and same shape. So there we go, so our black wool's added. So the next thing I'm gonna do is take a little sliver of my white Shetland cool wool. I'm gonna roll it between my fingers and then place it on the inside inner corner of our eye and for it to go around the bottom half of our eye. So I've got quite a lot of wool here, so I'm gonna trim away some of that excess in a second and you'll be able to see more clearly what I'm doing. But we're adding a waterline in Okay, so I'm going to take my embroidery scissors and just trim away that excess. And then I'm just going to felt this down into place. And I'm using my extra fine needle here. I've swapped out my medium cross star needle for my extra fine twisted needle, just so that I've got a bit more flexibility. The medium twisted needle would be too much for this. So you want to make sure that this white tapers inwards when you get to the inner inside part of the eye as you can see here and then the thicker amount of white is on the sort of inner outer inside that makes no sense but you can see what I mean on the video here so it's kind of going in inward and then it's coming outward so you've got more white on the outside inner outside part still makes no sense okay Luckily, we have a video so you can see what I'm doing. Otherwise, I'm sure I'd completely confuse you. But all this does is it adds that lovely cutesy look that we're looking for. So I'm going to do exactly the same thing on the opposite side. Again, just keep checking and looking at it straight on to make sure that it's looking the same. It's looking symmetrical to the side you've already done. So there you go. So we've added in the waterline. So we're going to add some pupils in now. And this is going to really transform him. So I'm just going to take my fine needle again. And I'm just going to felt the white into the kind of central part of the eye, slightly, slightly upwards, but pretty central to the black that we've already added. And just felt that round so you get a nice circular white pupil added to the centre of that black area there that we've felt it in. So just use your needles to go in a kind of a circular motion as you felt it. You can probably see on the video here, I know it's sped up, but you can see here I'm taking the needles around as I'm felting it to create that circular shape. Until you get something this size, you don't want anything too big, you want it to be relatively small. We're going to do the same on the other side, you can't see it, but I've done the same on the other side. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add some light to the eye as well, so we've got a bit of reflection. So I'm going to place a smaller piece of white in the lower bottom corner of where we've already added our, our pupil. You want to make sure that there's some black in between these two. You don't want them to be on top of each other and you want to make sure that the second piece of wool that you add is about a half to a quarter of the size of the first piece you already added so it's a tiny tiny dot and the reason for that is otherwise it's a bit confusing as to what's the pupil and what isn't um, and people won't really know where to look so you really want to get this piece felted down so that it's nice and small but it's just a hint of light so about there is about right and i'm going to do the same with the other side going to add that second piece in and then we're going to just add in a bit more of that brown wool around the eye that we've already added because now we've got the eye in place we can see where we want that brown to to feature more where we want it to go up to 
So I'm just adding a bit more so that we're getting a bit more at the top of the eye and it's going on a slant. So the bulk of the brown wool is going on the sort of inner upper corner, if that makes sense, on a bit of a horizontal, as you can see here because their eyes they're not completely circular the the color around their eyes isn't circular it tends to kind of taper upwards on a horizontal on a horizontal on a diagonal sorry like so so i'm going to do the same on the other side now and then i'm also just going to add some more around the sides as well just building it up and just add a little at a time and then you'll get to the stage where you're happy with how it looks and he'll be looking a lot more meerkatty Right, so next we're gonna make his nose. So I'm gonna fold this black piece of wool bats over twice, and then we're gonna create a triangular shape again. So folding it round into a triangular shape. And this is very similar to the mouse tutorial I did in terms of how we make his nose, although this is gonna be quite a different shape to the mouse tutorial nose. So once you've got that triangular shape, what you wanna do is you wanna really sort of soften those angles as much as you can and we're almost going to sort of flatten it slightly so we don't want to have any sharp angles for this nose at all so i'm just using my knee my um my nail sorry to hold this in place it's difficult to see on the map because it's on a um a bird's eye view but i'm just using my needles to push push that wall inwards to soften those corners and then as you can see i'm using my nail to hold it down so that I'm not gonna stab myself for any reason if I'm holding it down with my finger. So the nails are nice and solid. Okay, so you wanna keep going until it's the shape that you want. So get rid of that naughty angle there. And you can continue to shape it once it's on the face as well. So don't feel like you need to get it exactly the right shape before you add it on. We can still shape it once it's added onto the face, but we wanna get that rough idea of the shape that we're looking for. And I'm felting down on a diagonal here as well. So I'm not felting sideways. It might look a little bit like that, but I'm felting into the mat on a diagonal. So I'm, again, not at risk of stabbing myself and keeping it nice and safe. But felting gloves would be a good option here. So I'm gonna place his nose onto my meerkat's face. And initially, I'm just gonna, again, tack around those peripheral edges to get it tacked into place so it can't go anywhere going around that side as well. And we don't want to felt down into the center of this too much because we'll end up flattening all that lovely bulk and that lovely nose that we've already made. And we don't want to do that. We want to keep the shape to this. We want to keep that lovely proud snout that's kind of standing out from the rest of his face. So try not to felt too much in the center. Obviously you want to felt a little bit to make sure it's all secured into place, but just, yeah, don't go too crazy. And again, if you're doing the, and if you are felting down the center, go with quite shallow stabs. So you're connecting with the brown wall on the other side, but you're not really pushing it down. So I'm just shaping it now, going around those peripheral edges, shaping it to how I want his nose to look. And I'm also doing some pinching as well with my fingers. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add some additional wool around that brown where we've added to create a bit more shaping around his eyes. So I'm taking some of my white Shetland wool and I'm just placing it around that brown that we've already added. Again, doing shallow stabs because I want this to stay fluffy. I want that texture to be there. So I don't want it to be really firmly felted. So I'm speeding this up, but you're going round the face with this piece just to, just to create a bit more interest. And I'm also felting, so where you have his nose and you've got that triangular piece, I'm also starting to felt in between there as well. So I'm gonna take the same brown wool that we use for the eyes and I'm gonna use that for his mouth. I'm just using my extra fine needle again just to felt this into position. And then I'm just gonna trim away any of those excess bits as well that we don't need. So I'm just gonna get rid of that in a second. Because we don't want it to be too thick. We want it to be quite a narrow mouth, but we want to be able to see it at the same time. But I didn't want to go for a really dark brown. I think this, this brown is quite a nice one to use. So it's not too light, but dark enough so you can see it and it really does make something of the mouth. So now I've trimmed away that excess, I'm just going to go in and really get this nice and deeply set. I'm just going to use my double needle pen just to speed the process up. And I'm just using those side by side now. 
and just going up and down the length of the mouth to really get that nice and deeply felted into the rest of the face. And you could add some smile dimples if you wanted to as well, just to create a bit more shaping and a bit more interest. Or you can leave it like this, it's completely up to you. So what I'm finding now is that his head's looking a bit flat. I should have added a bit of bulk earlier, but I'm gonna add a bit of bulk retrospectively now. So I've just made a Swiss roll shape with some of that brown that we've already been using. And I'm just gonna felt this onto the back of his head just to create a bit more shape. Um, but ideally, I should have really added this at the beginning of the tutorial when we did the core part, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't make too much of a difference. So just felting that all down. And then later we'll add another extra piece to cover that join over. So I'm just gonna add a bit more of that brown, that same brown we're using for the mouth and the eyes, down that area of his, but sort of between the eyes, up from his nose. Again, just to create a few more layers and keeping it fluffy as well, using those nice shallow stabs to keep that texture there. I don't want to go too crazy, but also really working on getting that nice deep indentation in the middle. Because it just, again, adds more interest to the face. It gives his face more character, I think. And I'm still using my fine twisted needles here. So I've had to work out which one's which, because I used to get them mixed up all the time. So my fine twisted needles are the ones with the, uh, with the nail varnish on, so I can identify them easily, because I kept getting them confused. Okay, I'm just gonna put a bit of that brown around his nose as well, just to bring that brown into the rest of the face, integrate it in so it just doesn't look like something that's been lobbed on. We want it to look like it's part of his face. And then the same on the other side, just add that little bit of extra brown there. Now his eyes are in, he's really, really starting to take form. You can really see what he's going to be. It's very exciting. That's what I love about needle felting. It is just so incredibly satisfying that you can kind of get from the stage that we were at at the beginning of the tutorial where he just looked like a bit of a brown blob to this stage. So I'm going to wrap his arms next. So I'm just going to take a long strip of that brown wool bats, felt it down over the shoulder first of all, just to anchor it. We don't want to anchor this over the chest because we'll ruin the white that we've already added in. So we wanna anchor it in tightly into his shoulder. And then I'm just gonna wrap this round like we have done throughout the tutorial with all the other parts of his body that we've wrapped. But again, keeping it nice and flat and overlapping. So as you're folding, overlap that brown onto the previous piece so you get a nice even look. So we're going all the way down and then just back up to where the wall ends. And then I'm just giving it a good old felt round. Getting rid of any lumps and bumps. And then giving his head a bit of a felt as well. So I've done the same thing to the other arm. So both his arms are wrapped now. And I'm just gonna go in and just do a bit more shaping around his face. And I'm going to add another piece of that brown wool bats just to add a little bit more bulk around the, the shoulder and the upper arm of our meerkat. So he's got a slightly thicker arm on the, um, on the bicep. So I'm not going all the way down, just about, just under half of the way down I took that piece. And then again, just felting that down into position and then just giving it a good felt to integrate it in with the rest of the wall that we've already added. And just make sure that you really felt under the armpit as well, because that's an area that can get neglected and then you can end up with lots of looseness. So lift his arm up and give him a good felt under his armpit too. So that's all done. So you want to do the same thing on the other side. And then I'm just going to take another piece of that brown wall and I'm just going to place it over his head and I'm just going to felt it over the top of where we added that um, Swiss roll shape earlier on. Get that all nicely felted in. So you, you can't see any joins. Joins are bad. We don't want to see any joins on this. So I wonder what the little lad that's, that this is for, I wonder what he's going to name, name our meerkat. Could he go for something classic like Malcolm or... Monty, 
Marvin, Marvin the meerkat, or will he go kind of, you know, a bit off piste and go for something like Craig, Kevin? I used to have a dog called Kevin. He was amazing, um, but unfortunately, we couldn't we couldn't keep him because he didn't like the kids. But um, yeah, I love human name, human names with pets. I always always bring a smile to my face. So who knows what this uh, little chap will be called? But um, I will ask. I will ask his mummy. He's going to be a Christmas present, so uh, we'll know by Christmas what he has been christened as. So I'm just going to wrap his tail next. So. I'm just going to felt and anchor that initial loose fibre for the long length that I've got into his bottom. And then again, I'm going to wrap his tail like we did his arms a moment ago, overlapping as I go all the way down past the end and then back up. And try and make sure that you have enough so you can go for two runs of this and have enough to then felt it, felt that last excess piece into his bottom just makes life easier for you in the long term rather than having to add it in sections. So I'm giving his tail a good old felt with my fine needles here. Just getting it nice and smooth. And next we're going to make his ears. So I've got my brush mat here and I've got some more of that brown wool bats that I've been using for his eyes and his mouth. I'm going to take two equal pieces. I'm going to take my multi-tool and I'm going to felt a circular shape around the top and then fold over those loose fibres into themselves so I've got this almost like a ghost shape I guess you could call it. So this kind of flattened um, sort of, yeah, half circle shape with loose fibres at the bottom and then the same on the other side so you should have two equal pieces. I'm then going to place his ear. I'm just going to position it to see where it looks best. So about here looks good. I don't want to make this too circular and pinch it too much because I've looked on photos and meerkat ears tend to be a bit flatter than they would with other animals. So I don't want them, I don't want them to look like a teddy bear by pinching them. So I'm just conscious that they need to stay quite flat. And then I'm just going to felt that piece into the back of his head. And I'm just going to go across nice and simple and then that excess I'm just going to cut away so I'm taking taking the felting up about halfway oh you tried to escape I'm just going to trim away that excess and then I'm just going to give that another good felt so it's nice and deeply set into the head so it's not going to come away at all so that looks good so I'm going to do the same on the other ear so he looks like this, so he's looking very meerkatty now. So my last thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to take a bit more of that brown wool. It's working hard today, this brown wool. And I'm just going to wrap the ends of his hands a little bit more, just to create a bit of a divide between his hands and his arm. And felt that down and do the same on the other side as well. So just taking a bit more. So he should eventually look like this. And there you go, that is your meerkat finished. So he is looking super sweet. So I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I have really loved making this meerkat. He's been a lot of fun and he looks so super cute. He would look great on top of a Christmas tree actually, I think. But I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial today. If you did, if you could like the videos and if you could, um, I can't talk, if you can subscribe, I can't, I still can't talk. And if you can subscribe to my channel, that would be absolutely amazing because it just really helps me to get more videos out to you guys. I will see you on Friday next week with more tutorials for needle felting. Until then, have a wonderful day and I will see you very, very soon. Bye.